guys, it's Way here, and today I'm going to show you guys how to trade with one swatch items on FIFA 18. If you guys have a lot of coins, this is the perfect method for you, and there isn't a better way of main coins on this game than one swatch trading. If you've got around 50 to 100k, you're going to be in a perfect place to try this method out. And if you guys don't quite have that amount of coins yet, go and check out the video in the top right corner of this video right here, and that is going to show you a very good low budget method that will get you up to around 50 to 100k in no time. I would recommend going and checking that one out first if you don't quite have the coins, but if you do have around 50 to 100k, or more, obviously the more coins you have the better as it's going to be even easier and you can get more deals but if you do have that amount of coins you're going to be able to start doing one to watch trading and it can make you so many coins. Last year I made millions and millions of coins as did many other people using this method and it is so so easy to do as well you only need to spend a couple of minutes doing it every couple of days and you can make so much profit so I really would recommend watching the whole video as I'm going to be showing you guys what cards to buy, when to buy them, when to sell them and also plenty of other tips and tricks and examples throughout the video so if you guys do enjoy if you do want to win a 10 pound xbox or playstation gift card all you need to do is leave a like on the video let me know in the comments down below how many coins you've got so i can base some of my future trading methods around that and subscribe to my channel if you're on your own here without further ado let's go on into the method for those of you who don't know one to watch items have a dynamic rating system that means that if the player with a one to watch card gets an inform a man of the match card an international man of the match card a team of the group stage card anything that isn't a team of the season or team of the year card they will be boosted up and will get the same rating. So as an example, Yarmolenko, he is a default 81 rated one swatch card and a default 81 rated gold card. But he actually received an upgrade to an 84 rated inform a couple of days ago. And because he got that inform card, his one swatch item also went up to that 84 rating overall. If he gets another inform, the one swatch card will go up to the same rating. You guys get the idea. And this works with man of the match cards, informs, basically any special cards that aren't team of the season or team of the year cards. In the past on FIFA 17, it only works with informs, whereas this year actually works with any special cards as long as they're not team of the seasons or team of the year. So bearing that in mind, these cards can vary massively in price and can increase and decrease very, very quickly and can go up by huge amounts of coins if they do play well. The reason for this is people go and buy their cards hoping to get some good profit on them as if they get an inform, they're obviously going to receive an upgrade to that one swatch card. Now if you bear this in mind, you can go and get these cards very early and make a lot of coins. Now you've got a few different options when it comes to actually buying these cards. You can either buy them when they're at their cheapest and that is not normally when the player isn't playing so it's going to be a couple of days before they play now the best time in my opinion to buy one to watch cards if you want to invest in them is after they've played and they haven't had a good performance so if they haven't scored any goals or got any assists as a striker for example if they're a goalkeeper or defender and they lost and conceded a few goals that's going to be a good time to go and buy some cards because anyone who invests in those cards they're going to be selling them on on the market as obviously they've had a bad game they're not going to be getting an inform a lot of people just panic sell the cards and you can get them quite cheaply then. Their price then increases before they play. So if you guys go and get a card, for example, on Monday after they played on a Sunday, or if you get them even on a Sunday just after the game, they're going to be at their lowest then and they then rise up in price throughout the week and then at the end of the week when they're about to play their price will be at its peak. Now going into the game you guys can either sell the cards before they play a couple of hours before kickoff. You can sell into the hype and make some easy profit with no risk or you can actually keep the card and in the game you can watch the game and you can sell the card if they do score a goal. You can keep it till the very end of the game if they're playing very well and could potentially receive an inform if they've maybe scored two or three goals or got a couple of assists or saved a penalty depending obviously on the player's position. So you've got a few different times to buy the cards and a few different times to sell them and I'll be covering those in a lot more detail later on But firstly, let's take a look at some examples of these cards So you guys can get a good idea of how much their prices do vary depending when they're playing depending on factors such as injuries Playing time how well they're playing all that stuff. I'll be covering that in just a moment The first example is going to be Bernadeschi He was around 30,000 coins when he first came out of packs on the 29th of September and with Juventus playing on the 1st of October His price gradually increased until kickoff as people were going and buying the card in the expectation that he could potentially have a good game and maybe receive an inform. Now in that game he actually went on to score a goal and get an assist and his price skyrocketed to around about 90,000 coins I believe at his peak and he was out that for about one or two hours then he dropped down again as a lot of people just didn't really think that was enough to get an inform but he actually went down to around 50,000 coins if you guys had actually bought the card beforehand at around 30k you could have sold him before the game for about 50,000 coins or so you could have sold him during the game after he scored for around 90k or after the game for about 50k either of those things would have made you a load of coins another example is Yarmolenko and as I said earlier on he actually received an upgrade to an 84 I did inform from this game as he got a goal and an assist now before kickoff he was around about 50,000 coins when he was first released he then gradually 
gradually increased in price with the events playing on the 1st of October. And he went up to around about 60 or 70,000 coins before kickoff. So he went up 20k without even playing. If you guys had picked up that card when he was just at his lowest price before the hype had started and you sold him just before kickoff, you'd have still been able to make around 20,000 coins. As I said, in that game, he got a goal and an assist. That increased his price even more and he actually went up to around about 100,000 coins after the game. And when he received an inform, his price went up even more and he went up to 140k when he was announced in the team of the week. Another much cheaper example is Traore. Now, he was around 14,000 coins when he was first released and his price increased to, I believe, around 19k at his highest and around about 15 to 16,000 coins on average just before kickoff. Now, he didn't really have the best of games and didn't do anything worthy of getting an inform. So after that, his price did drop down to around about 13,000 coins at his lowest and now it is rising again just before he plays his next game, which is going to be in a couple of days' time. Now, this is what happens with one to watch cards. Their prices go up and down depending when they're playing and how well they're playing. What's normally going to happen is the card's going to increase in value throughout the week from Monday all the way up until the weekend when they normally play and it's then going to reach its highest around that weekend period and it's then going to do one of two things. If the player plays well and people go and think he's going to get an inform, if he gets some goals or assists, anything like that, anything worthy of getting an inform, the price will normally rise up more. If he has a bad game and doesn't do anything worthy of getting an inform, it's going to drop down as people are going to go and sell the card and then it's just going to rise up again till the weekend then it's going to either rise again or it's going to drop and it's going to do that over and over again. So if you guys buy the cards at their cheapest, just keep an eye on the cards prices, you're going to be able to get some good deals, especially if you buy them after they've played and not had a good game you can get some very very cheap deals one final example again on a slightly lower budget is Kessie now he was going for around about 20,000 coins when he was first released he then rose up to around about 25k before playing didn't do anything worthy of getting an inform and dropped down to around 18 or 19,000 coins and then he started rising again because he is going to be playing in a couple of days' time. And that shows exactly the same as with Triore. The price rises and then either dips or it rises up again. It's very, very easy. All you need to do is buy these one watch cards when they're at their cheapest, keep an eye on the prices, and normally you're going to find they're at their cheapest just after they've played. If they haven't had a good game, people are going to sell the cards, and that's a perfect time to buy your one watch investments to then sell later on in the week. So now that you know when to buy your cards, you're obviously going to be wondering which players should you go ahead and buy. Now, what you want to look for is players who sell normally for around about 15 to 100 or 200,000 coins. I wouldn't recommend trading with people like Neymar and Lukaku unless you have millions and millions of coins because that would just be pretty much all of your budget on one player and you don't want to risk it too much with these one swatch items because you never, if a player gets injured for example, they're going to drop down a lot in price. You can see that with Morata. He was going up a lot in value as he was playing very, very well, but then he's got injured. He's not going to be playing for a while, and a lot of people have sold his card, and it dropped down in value. The same happened with Gabriel Jesus last year. He was going for about six or 700K. Then he got injured for the rest of the season, and his price dropped down to like 100K just because no one was going to be buying him as he wasn't going to be getting any informs as he was obviously injured. So you want to focus on players who aren't too expensive so you can pick up a few of them, and you aren't going to be risking too many of the coins on, and they're normally going to be good players to go ahead and trade with. Another key factor to bear in mind is whether or not the player is actually playing because obviously if they're sat on the reserves they're not going to be getting informs they're not going to be getting goals they're not going to be getting assists and their value isn't going to go up so i wouldn't recommend going with someone right now like theo hernandez because as of right now he isn't playing for real madrid he's not even getting on the subs bench so obviously there's no chance of him getting informs and his price isn't really going to go up you want to focus on players who are playing games and have the potential to get goals get assists or if it's a goalkeeper get clean sheets and save penalties maybe if it's a defender get assists keep clean sheets play well at the back you want to focus on players who are actually playing and have potential to get informs. So again, people who are playing in very attacking teams, for example, or playing in teams that are playing very well, they have a better chance of maybe Man City players, for example. They're scoring a lot of goals right now and they're playing very well going forward. So Walker could be a good one. Mohamed Salah has had a very, very good start to the season and uh, he's getting a lot of goals. So he could be another good one to go with. And you've got people like Bernadeschi. He's now starting to play for Juventus, so he's a good one to go with. But I wouldn't really go recommend going with any players who either aren't playing at all like Hernandez or are kind of on the cusp of playing and sometimes start, sometimes come off the bench and don't always start. You want a player who's going to be starting a lot of games, playing a lot of games and has the potential to get goals and assists. So that is obviously what gives them informs and makes their price go up in value. So some of the main players I'm trading with right now are Davinson Sanchez from Spurs, Bruma from RB Leipzig, also people like Kessie, Traore and there's a couple of others like Douglas Costa and if you've got the coins you can go ahead and use people like Hamas Rodriguez and Taliso. I wouldn't really recommend trading with people like Lukaku and Neymar just because they're so expensive. As I said earlier on, you don't want to be risking all your coins on one of those players because let's say Lukaku gets injured, for example, 
and he's out for a few months, his price is going to drop down a lot and you will lose out on a lot of coins. So I would recommend getting more cards and spreading that over a lot of different players rather than just going and getting one big player like Lukaku because it's less risky and you can make more profit overall by doing that. And also, as I said earlier on, don't go with someone like Morata right now. Don't go with people who aren't playing because they're either injured or then just not getting into the team. So make sure you focus on players like I mentioned, people like Bruma, Davinson Sanchez. There's loads of different options. Just players who are playing games and have the chance to get in form. So now that you guys have got a better idea of which players to trade with and when to pick them up, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering when should you sell the cards that you go ahead and invest in. You've got a few different options. Firstly, you can sell the cards a couple of hours before kickoff and a couple of hours before the lineups are announced. If you do that, you're normally going to be making solid profit. The cards will rise up in price and you don't really run any risk of losing out on coins and you can just sell into the hype before kickoff. You can also sell when the lineups are announced, but there's a little bit more risk there, but you can make more profit. So if your player is announced in the starting lineup, they're probably going to go up a little bit more in value, but if they're not announced in that starting lineup, they will drop down. So you can obviously sell them then if you want, or you can sell them in the game if they do play well, you can go ahead and sell them after they've scored a goal. You can sell them after they've got an assist, anything like that. Or you could keep them throughout the whole game and see what they do. If they end up scoring two or three goals, you could maybe sell them for even more coins. It's up to you what you do. The longer you hold them, the more risk there is, but the more opportunity of making more coins there is. So it is up to you when you sell them. You've got a few different options, and it's all down to personal opinion. How much you do want to risk these cards, whether you just want to make guaranteed profit but make a little bit less, or whether you want to have that risk but potentially make even more coins, it really is down to you whichever option you go with hopefully you'll be able to make a load of coins. Now picking out one to watch cards when they're at their cheapest and selling them either before, after or during games isn't the only way of trading with these items. You can also go ahead and trade with them in game without having picked them up beforehand and this can make you a lot of coins but you don't have to be very very quick with it. Now you either want to be watching the game live on TV or you want to have an app on your phone like Score Center or OneFootball that's going to notify you as soon as the player scores and will show you who actually goes ahead and scores the goal. Now to do this you do want to have a good idea of all the players who are playing and all the teams that are playing so let's say you're watching football on a Saturday, you've got your phone or another monitor showing you the game and showing you the scores. You want to have your console open with the transfer mark or the companion app or web app if you guys don't have access to your console. You want to have them both open at the same time. Now what I would recommend doing is writing down in notes on your phone or just on a piece of paper all the players who are currently playing at the time you're on your console. So let's say it's a Saturday, you've got AC Milan playing, Juventus playing and let's say RB Leipzig as well as a few other teams. You want to make sure that you know whether or not Bruma is starting, whether Bernadeschi is starting for Juventus, Kessie for AC Milan. You want to make sure that you know all the ones to watch guys that are currently playing whilst you're sat watching the scores. You then want to go through onto the transfer market and just find all of the lowest buy nows for these guys and add like five or six of them to the transfer market on your transfer targets. Just add a couple of the lowest buy nows to your transfer targets so you can go and buy them if the player scores. You then want to be watching the game as soon as you see one of those players score. So let's say Kessie scores for AC Milan. The moment you see he scores, you want to go over to your console and buy the lowest buy now as you can. Just get the cheapest ones that you added to your transfer targets. And if you're quick enough, you can get those cards before anyone else does. And you can sell them on. I would recommend selling about two or three minutes after the player scores or if it looks like it's maybe going to be the decider in a big game like uh, maybe the, the Manchester derby let's say Carl Walker scores the winner in the 90th minute and he keeps a clean sheet it's 1-0 he's most likely going to be getting an in for him if you snipe that card very very early and you can get it as cheaply as possible you could keep it until the team of the week comes out or you could keep it for a few days and sell it on but if it is just maybe in an AC Milan against Genoa game maybe quite a small game like that and the player scores early on, you can go ahead and just sell them on as soon as they've scored, a couple of minutes afterwards, and that should be able to make you some good coins. So that is another way of trading with them. Go and buy the cards the moment they score, but to do that, you have to be very quick, and you have to have your eyes open, and you want to be making sure you're looking at the transfer market, the scores, maybe the game live, just make sure you have a really good idea of everything that's going on. But if you do that, you should be good, and you should be able to make some good coins, and that is another way of trading with one to watch guys. So hopefully this video has helped you guys out. If you do have any questions, leave them in the comments down below, and I'll try my best to get back to you. And if you guys are wondering about the cards to trade with, I did mention a few early on, but people like Davinson, Sanchez, Aurier, Bruma, people like Walker, even Edison if you want, Kessie, there's so many different players to trade with. Just stay away from people like Lukaku, Neymar, Morata right now as he's injured, people like Hernandez who aren't playing. Just trade with players who aren't too expensive, so I wouldn't go with anyone over about 200k or so, and make sure they're players who are playing games. And just stay alert, make sure you're watching the games, make sure you're updated as soon as the player scores, and you should be good. And I said earlier on, there's a lot of different options when you sell the cards, but this is so, so easy. You can just buy a couple of cards when they're at their cheapest, just keep an eye on the price on Footbin. I'll leave a link down below to that, it's going to show you all of the player prices. 
prices, buy them when they're at the cheapest, after they've played, maybe not had the best of games, and sell them either on kickoff, before kickoff, during the game, wherever you want, but it's so, so easy and can make you a lot of coins. I hope you guys enjoyed, leave a like if you did, subscribe if you're on your own here, and I'll see you guys in my next video, take care.